Let me talk about chaga a little bit. It's a very unique mushroom. In fact, it's the not mushroom because chaga is not technically really a mushroom. Chaga is what we call a sclerotium. And a sclerotium is where you have the mycelium, which is the vegetative state of the mushroom, of the fungus, during the fungal life cycle, growing into the bark of the birch tree, specifically the birch tree. And the tree reacts to the growth of the mycelium by creating these compounds that are protective to the birch tree from the mycelium. Turns out these that as the as the mycelium grows into the tree, the tree starts to create more wood around it, so it looks like it's a tumor on the tree. I discussed a doctrine of signatures before. Doctrine of signatures is the old way that in um, folk medicine, they would try to figure out what a herb or a mushroom was good for. And they said, well, gee, like Ryan's mane, if it looks like the brain, maybe it's good for the brain. So if it looks like a tumor, Maybe it's good for cancer. Well, in fact, in folk medicine, they started using it for that. And lo and behold, they did find in many cases, it was very helpful for people who had cancer. Now, chaga is interesting. It grows only in the North Country, in Siberia, in Finland, on birch trees. There's no way we can culture it, so it has to be wildcrafted. They actually have to get it from these birch trees, and then it's very, very woody. They have to, you know, grind it up into a fine powder, and then they um, cook it in hot water at high temperatures for a long period of time um, in order to extract all the good stuff from it. It has a mildly bitter taste, but what's really interesting is that it contains a lot of compounds that aren't produced by the mycelium, but in fact are produced by the birch tree. Uh, there's betulinic acid and betulin, which have been shown to have anti-cancer kinds of properties to them. So um, chaga has other has had other applications as well, being used for gastritis, and gastric cancer, um, tuberculosis, and other problems such as that. But most people, when they talk about chaga, they're also thinking about its applications for cancer. So. Hey, if you like this information, why don't you subscribe to this channel and you'll get a whole lot more coming down as I keep producing more and more of these videos. And if you've got some comments, you'd like to share your experiences with chaga or your experiences using chaga in your own pets for whatever purposes, um, please use the comment section. Let us know your thoughts on this topic. And coming up next, we're going to talk about shiitake, one of my favorite edible mushrooms.